Hey guys, part two of the uh, tailstock offset. Uh, yes, it's hot. <laughs> and then you can see my man boobs, can't you? <laughs> Not to mention, I'll tell you what, digressing. As you get old and your skin gets loose, it's ridiculous. <laughs> All these crinkly bits. Anyway, um, I got this finished, in essence. I've got... Uh, two or three things to do to finish and, and then test it. I'll probably do another video on that eventually. Uh, I've got to add graduation marks. Um, oh, and harden the uh, heat treat the center. And I may yet try and make another center with an embedded ball bearing. That's uh, something for an experiment later, possibly, <laughs> if I can be bothered. The whole thing's so darn small, and as I've mentioned throughout the various clips that it, it make up part two, uh, it's so damn small. Uh, I think it'll do what I need to do, but I should have really scaled it up by one and a half times, maybe two times, but uh, small scale machining, I must admit, I'm not very good at. You have very tight tolerances, and... Uh, or basically, I don't, I've never done much small stuff, not like uh, Clickspring, who's really got a handle on small pieces. So anyway, here we are, part two, basically finished it, to all intents and purposes. And uh, I'm not sure what's next. I have no idea, as, as usual. So I'll see you eventually at some point, and uh, I hope you found the... Uh, the two parts of some interest anyway the plans to remind you the plans were from homemadetools.net and I've taken liberties with several dimensions because some aren't totally critical I've just done what suited the purpose at the time so anyway I'll say thanks for watching and uh, goodbye for now hope to see you soon bye We're going to make a start on uh, part two and initially going to work on the cross slide and we've got to turn down each end of the main body. I've actually started turning this down but we're going to go pretty small and to save bothering with milling we need in the body here we need a cross hole of uh, 732 if I remember and at 90 degrees to that another small hole for a set screw and the mouth of the through hole has to be relieved with a milling cutter. I think I can do it all in here so we'll advance this out and we'll still use a center and then I'll put my dividing gear in the back of the spindle so we can uh, do a 90 degree change. Most people have seen my uh, seen my dividing gear. I've got another wheel which is uh, 0 to 100 but this is a 76. Quite useful for 90 degree increments and uh, all points in between. I'm just going to spot drill for the uh, larger hole and then go 90 and spot the other one. I think that'll that should do to give me a start. Now I've got to go around 90 degrees. I'm <coughs> just doing the last last bit of the uh, 732 hole. <laughs> this is making the whole thing look so small. Not far to go taking it a bit easy on this. Um, this is actually a one 
01 material. Trying to keep plenty of lube on it. Right, we're through. And then the, uh, whilst in this position, I've got to try and mill a little flat on there. <laughs> and I don't know whether this is going to be rigid enough. We'll have to see. Yeah, well, that wasn't pretty, actually. I've got enough relief on there and I can possibly even add a little bit of file if I need to. Right, <laughs> we can set this back. Well, actually, I can leave it where it is. Turn this down for a uh, final size for threading, which is pretty damn small. Uh, the milling operation was not highly successful. I may yet have to set that up in the milling machine and take another small bite just to tidy it up. I'll see. And then we've got a hole there for a set screw, which is actually going to be 3 mil. And a bit of deburring. And that's about it. So we'll get on with this next time. And then turn it round and do the other end. And so on. <laughs> I've got my finger there to get the stupid cam camera to focus. Um, Right, so I haven't bothered videoing all the uh, all the turning. This is uh, ridiculously small thread, isn't it? Really, ten twenty four. But um, following the plan, as I said before, this is going to be a very small unit, but hopefully adequate, and it makes an interesting project anyway. So what I'm going to do is to uh, mark this up, turn it round, and put the, the uh, other end threaded and uh, this bit will be almost done then we can move on so I'm really trying to economize on the amount of video footage just showing you stage by stage really I was pretty dumb to try and do this in the lathe with the cross drilling attachment <laughs> it was nowhere near rigid enough so set this up in the mill, took a fresh cut and um, basically tidied it up because it was not good. <laughs> now it's a bit better. Well, <laughs> that's finished. Finish this little bugger. I mean really, things are so small. So small. I'm certainly not going to use this for any large jobs, but <laughs> it's an interesting project. I must admit, I hate working on small stuff. I don't know how uh, Chris Clickspring manages with all his super duper small. Anyway, um, that's basically that's basically where we're at there. This is still a little bit. Oh, it's not tight, it's actually a very smooth fit. It's just very slight resistance. Um, so the centre is going to go in there with a flat on it, which will be uh, secured by that uh, set screw. And then we've got each end, we've got uh, basically brass knobs which we've got to make. So I think the next thing is I've got a piece of 3 8 drill rod so we're going to make the centre and get that done I think when I get to it. <laughs> well a bit of 3 8 drill rod we've got to make the centre. Uh, first thing is to put a taper on it 60 degree and then we've got several operations to do we'll have to go over to the mill
Now we don't need an absolute point on this, not a sharp point anyway. Uh, we'll just polish that up and then uh, get on with some milling. The next stage here is uh, reducing the diameter of the centre here, both sides. We've just completed the first side and um, that quarter inch is going to run along that slot. So I'm not bothering again with all the machining. Uh, I'll flip that over and make a start on the other side. I've just got to go another uh, couple of thou and then move along and uh, clean off this little bit here. I couldn't find, this is a 5 16th, I couldn't find a 3 8th that was uh, good enough so I'm using this. So we'll finish that last cut, check it out, clean up the front and then go on to uh, another stage. i just check. I think I've taken about a thou off too much. Yeah, no mind, I think we'll be okay. Uh, well, I have to confess the first effort was not good enough. <laughs> it's this one. I think I was actually two thou plus on the cut. So I've done another one. And that is that is a proper sliding fit. <laughs> Too about making work for yourself, but anyway, I'd, I wasn't going to put up with the first effort. Now we've got to uh, do something down here. Well guys, this, <laughs> we've got another little problem here. Um, I think probably I wasn't set absolutely on centre when I uh, cross-drilled using that lathe cross-drilling. And what it boils down to is that... <laughs> Here's the, uh, let me get this the right way around, I've had to mark it. Although this will, this will go nicely. But, because this wasn't quite on centre perfectly, what it boils down to now is that this, and it just makes a start, and then what's happening is, because this is not quite on centre, we're getting a slight rub at the top here and a slight contact at the bottom. So this is not this is not absolutely vertical. And what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to have to correct it. Um, the only way to do that that I'm because I'm not going to start again. <laughs> I've actually made the comment before, and I shall make it again probably more than once. This is this is too damn small. I should have actually scaled it up and made something twice the size, or one and a half times the size. And it's meant the tolerances are so critical. But the biggest problem is this uh, just being fractionally fractionally off. Very annoying, but what I'm going to do is to use a diamond hone 
and uh, work on this bit by bit. I think we're only talking about a few tenths, to be honest. It's actually quite modest, but it's the difference between go and no go. All right, I'll come back to you at some point, see if we can make a get a solution, and then I can finish the other bits. Well, this video is going to get more and more bitty, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's as I go from one crisis to another. Um, I've just been clocking this, running uh, along the slot. I'm going to put another hole in here, which is going to be for the keyway on the tailstock quill. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Well, ineptitude has uh, started to win the day. <laughs> And one thing is pretty certain is that doing a job in little bits and pieces, which is what I've been doing, a bit here and a bit there, and you sort of lose continuity. So here's what we're doing. I'm going to actually have to use this 180 degrees different. I'll tell you why at some point shortly. So this is the end that goes on the quill. And the hole the other side, which I actually drilled and threaded 1024, would have been too small. Anyway, but because I'm going to use this the other way up, I need an engaging option here for the quill keyway. I was going to go 1024 again, and then I realized that the quill keyway is actually 15.159. And that's not going to work. So I've shot up to quarter 20 because I haven't got a I haven't got much for 12 24 but before I drilled that I started drilling down here duh <laughs> I don't know whether that counts as bozo or just sheer carelessness probably that so we've got a quarter 20 in there so we're going to make a small uh, a small knob for that with a 0.159 tip to engage in the uh, Quill keyway. Right, explanation. The other reason I've gone 180 on this, so this is now the bottom of it. Having relieved the center by a few tenths each side on the critical points, it was still not quite fitting, and when I turned it over, I found it was. Uh, pretty good and it's offset in the uh, in the body on purpose because it's uh, designed primarily for coming from center across towards the operator all right so we've got function on that it's a little bit loose in the uh, in the hole in the body, which for some reason went a bit large, but that's got to have a set screw. And we've got two brass adjustment knobs to make for that. We've got the knob to make for this. We need some uh, index marks, and finally, the center itself needs to be hardened up. You may or may not see, I didn't turn it to a sharp point because I didn't see any purpose in that, so it's not quite a sharp point. Now we'll move on to the uh, later stages. This is for the index income locking knob for the uh, quill on the tailstock. Right, I'll finish taking this down to a quarter <coughs> and then we'll put a thread on it and uh, at the very end here just a small reduced diameter for the quill keyway. Well I'm not videoing every stage because it's just it's just too many bits and pieces it'll be uh, 
too long. So anyway, we're down to the uh, end size there for the keyway in the quill. Uh, thread, just put a knurl on here. It's not quite full depth, it doesn't need to be. So I've just got to put a bit more back chamfer on there and then part it off and then that piece is done. Well this was a perfect opportunity to, to use my uh, spindle spider which I made quite a while ago. I haven't used it a whole lot but uh, it's very nice to have when you need it. This uh, three quarter brass probably would be thrashing around if, uh, if I didn't have it secured. Right, update time. Um, I made this uh, this is for the keyway, a little bit longer than needed, but uh, that should do. But now, um, looking at the, uh, making these two little brass end knobs for the, uh, should we call it the carriage. So, I'm not going to show a lot of this, just a little bit. Hopefully it's nearly the last stage. <laughs> Well, we'll check the, uh, see where we got to on there. It's difficult to measure such small bits. Probably have to use the calipers. Just turning down here to five eighths, which is going to uh, sit in the uh, milled recess either side of the body. I meant to mention this is marked up here. That's a five eighths to be followed by a form cutter. This area will be knurled. That is a part off section when we finish this one. And then this is the other way around. So we've got the knurled section and the uh, form cutter. And then this section here, I've taken that down to 5 eighths plus some because we'll eventually part that off down here. Just, just so you know. Just finishing up the neural on here. I've got a nut coming loose on there. I think that's adequate. So we've got to um, do some chamfers before I part this off, get all these edges smoothed and then I think we're nearly done except when this one's parted off I've got to finish boring and threading this one. We just finished parting off this uh, first one. Right, I try and keep all my brass chippings <laughs> separate there. Oh, there's the first one. I've just got to clean up, clean up that little bit there. Finish boring this and threading it and then part that off. You might hear a fan running by the way. <laughs> it's bloody hot in here. I just put a chamfer on that before I finish parting. Oh, 
All right. Uh, just a bit of cleaning up to do on those. The polishing, chamfer in there, etc. All right. Well, I'm actually going to say this is basically finished. Let's just put it on the uh, quill. Do up the uh, keyway lock and the only remaining movements in the quill itself, despite the fact that I made a new uh, key for it. So, anyway, what we've got, it's pretty logical the way it works. If I want to bring it across, all right. The only thing I've got to finish, um, I haven't worked out how to get it cleanly. I want one graduation on the center and probably about three or four on the body. Uh, <laughs> that hole I told you about before, that was uh, a 1024, which is not only redundant, but it wouldn't have been big enough. And got to harden the uh, hard in the centre but I'm going to call it quits because there are so many odd stupid little stages and uh, little hassles along the way and at some point I'll get the uh, graduations done and get that hardened and uh, then we'll try it out so basically that's it for the time being <laughs> the, the end of the marathon so thanks for watching guys hope you stuck with it alright